Well, this is another epic dive with myself, and Chris, and Akaroa. And in this particular dive, I've got some butterfish in front of me, and I've got this one particular fish that shows up. I'm not expecting it. It just sort of comes out of nowhere. You want to see what fish it is? But you know, you don't want to talk yourself out of a dive. Let's at least get the boat in the water and have a go. <sighs> Over the course of this video, and also at the end of the next video, I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, the boat launching and boat retrieval procedures. You see, what I have is an inflatable boat, it's a Trucket Discovery 3.3 meter. You can deflate this boat and just put it in your car. However, there's a bit of a time investment involved in doing so. And what I've found as an alternative is to use a simple trailer for launching and retrieving, similar to you know any other boat that's out there. However, this is an inflatable. So you think to yourself, well, what kind of trailer can you use for an inflatable? Well, actually you can use basically just about any trailer. This is a garden trailer. So this is a garden trailer that I've just made a couple of tweaks to. I've put some bunks on the side and I've got a, a, a toolbox up the front and I strap the boat onto the trailer and then we back it down the ramp and then we hand unload it into the water. And there's a wee bit of procedure involved there with uh, taking the uh, straps off and the, uh, the tie ropes and stuff like that. So while I'm parking the car, Chris or whoever my dive buddy happens to be, basically stays there at the ramp and uh, starts the engine and just gets it ready, gets it warmed up. On this particular day, wind was a real concern. It was quite choppy in the harbour, even in the morning, and it was going to get even worse in the afternoon. We've got new gear on, we're about to get in, but we know that over the course of the day, we're going to have to keep an eye on that weather because if it gets too bad, then we're going to have to cut the diving short. Luckily, it all went pretty well. You 
Now what you're looking at right here as I'm beginning my initial search is you're seeing these columns of seaweed. You'll see there I just check the gun, make sure the safety's not still on. See I've already learned from that previous mistake. But you look at these big columns of seaweed, we're in about 5 or 6 metres of water here and the seaweed columns are coming all the way up to the surface. And I never take this for granted, although the seaweed is not fish and it's not exciting, you can't shoot seaweed, it's just, seaweed's just seaweed. One thing that you have to give consideration to is that there are some parts of New Zealand which are kinnebarrens. So what happens there is people overfish the snapper, then there's uh, no snapper there to eat the kinners, then the kinners just take over, they eat all the seaweed, the whole lot of it, and you just end up with these empty rocks with just its tiny little kinners all over them. Uh, it's not ideal, it's called a kinnebarren, and luckily down here in Banks Peninsula we don't have kinnebarrens. So Chris is not far away from me here and uh, I'm about to start finding fish actually quicker than what I was expecting. There are some butterfish and I re have really have a hard time hitting them to be honest.
So this little fella is what I call the foolish wrasse. He's not the one that I shoot, but I'm going to shoot one in a minute. And after missing and missing and missing these butterfish like crazy, I'm now presented with a chance to shoot a wrasse. You're going to see that in a moment. But I, I replayed that video footage, footage and I think the mistake that I'm making as it relates to those butterfish is that I'm not getting the spear gun correctly lined up. Uh, so that it is right, it's going to go right on target because they're all shooting high so I just need more time in the water, more practice uh, and eventually I'm going to get it, eventually I'm going to get it but without hitting any butterfish I'm now thinking okay I'll shoot some of these wrasse So there's the bag there, and I hit the water with uh, the crayfish net attached to the float. Rats are nothing spectacular to shoot, they're a pretty common fish, and contrary to public opinion, or contrary to, I should say, some people's opinion, they're, they're not bad eating, they're fine, there's nothing wrong with them, they're a little bit bony to fill it, and they tend to have these quite big scales on the outside of, you know, their skin, but if you can get past the boniness and get past the scales, the, the flesh itself on a ras is actually fine, it's not, prob not a problem at all. So I've reloaded and I'm just untangling a little bit and I'm about to discover a fish that I've never seen before. Initially I think that this is a John Dory, but I have a look at it and it's, no, it's something else. This is, it's something else. What is this thing? swoop on down because I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm thinking could this be a leather jacket I've never seen one in the water before okay it's a leather jacket
Yeah, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, I know, thanks. I thought, I know. I know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm responding verbally ahead of time to those people who are already furiously typing into the YouTube comments that, dude, it's just a leather jacket. That fish ain't that special. Yeah, uh, look, fine, fine. For you, perhaps not. For me, the thing is that I haven't been spearfishing all that long. And you know, every small little victory, every first time that I accomplish something, it's, it's a moment to be cherished. It's something new, it's something different. It's something really amazing. It's just like how six months ago I dived down to 10 meters for the first time. You know, you have to think about your accomplishments and, you know, appreciate them. And it, it may not be a big deal for you, it is for me. So as I'm th just diving through here, I see this little school of bait fish. I don't know what that is, actually. If, if you happen to know, uh, let me know in the YouTube comments, because I, I would like to know what those fish actually were. touch that dial well actually what you're going to have to do is tune in for the next video because this video has run so enormously long but it's some good dive footage that i, I had to split this thing into two videos this dive isn't over yet you're going to have to check out part two for the conclusion so hang around it's coming it's coming stay tuned for part two so what did you think of that video? Well, if you made it all the way to the end, then I'd say it's probably a pretty good video. And if you thought this video was good, trust me, the rest of them are good as well. So you should have a look at the rest of the videos on the channel. And while you're here, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and do the like button. You know how it goes.